with everyone in the world with their own view. Ever wonder if God has a view? And, and that's what the show's all about. What's God's view versus our view? Topics that affect our daily life. Empowering and inspiring. Right. To develop a heart, a kingdom mindset, you know. <laughs> because God does have a view. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, The Christian View. Hi, and welcome to The Christian View. I'm your host, Dr. Trudy. And I just want to say thank you for inviting us into your home, whether you're watching on our YouTube channel or on one of the many networks that we're on, or if you're listening to us by podcast or radio, I just want to say thank you. We never take sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ for, for granted. So um, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, today I have the special privilege of sitting with a good friend that we've known for a long time, through social media. Um, so thanks for flying in. Um, I have Maurice Martin, and you wrote a book, and I love the title. It's um, Your Butt is Too Big. And I want to get into the book and the title and all that in just a few minutes, but I just want to um, talk to our viewers for just a few for just a few minutes. You know, everybody has a past. Re past regrets, past mistakes, past things that have happened to you that maybe keep you bound and stuck. But God has a better way. And that's kind of what your book is about, you know, getting rid of the excuses of the past so that you can have the future that God intended you to have. So Maurice, you're a transformational life coach. You are a speaker. You're a sought after coach. Um, you're a, a husband, a father. So let's just talk about how you came up first with the title of the book, and then we're going to get into the meat of the book. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I often say is that everybody goes through things in life. We all have good times, bad times. Right. And if you don't deal with the things that you've been through on the negative side, they will deal with you in all the wrong ways. So true. And, and in my personal life, I've, I've had some, you know, some childhood trauma, some issues that maybe I didn't deal with and didn't work through. Right. And so I, I will start here. A lot of people, when they hear the title, they think, boy, that's a, that's a funny thing. But what if I told you I was sitting in prayer and I heard the Lord tell me, your butt is too big. Mm. At first I was like, okay, clearly that wasn't God. And Into I, the gym. I yeah. missed yeah. something, right? <laughs> yeah, right. But, but what it was was that God was actually trying to tell me there was something I needed to do. I needed mm. to have some courage. Right. I needed to go after some things. And I said, but God, that doesn't make sense. There's no way I'll be able to, but God, there's no way that I'm going to. And I heard your butt is too big. Mm, that's good. And in that moment, I then all of a sudden I had scripture just flash in my spirit. Moses, Moses, I need you to go and talk to these Egyptians. But God, I'm slow of speech. Yeah. It's Jeremiah. Hey, I, I need you to be a prophet for me. But God, I'm too young. And so oftentimes in life when God gives us instructions, we invalidate ourselves right. thinking that it's all about us and missing that it's God who qualifies us for the call. Amen. And, and when we can learn to take our eyes off of ourselves yes. and know that it's not about us, us, but it's all about him, we look at life differently. Absolutely. And also, you know, there, it's true that there's going to be some things where maybe you're not qualified. Right. Maybe you have to do some growing. But isn't that the point that God wants us to actually mature as we face the issues in our lives? Right. And so whenever there's a challenge, I don't care if it's getting married, if it's getting a new job, it's uh, starting a career that you always wanted to do, there's going to be bumps in the road. Right. If you lean into those, they grow you, they mature you, and overall, they make you more of the person God had in mind. Absolutely. And I love what you said, if you lean in, because so often when life gets hard, life gets challenging. It's when we pull back and we say, well, it must not be of God. If it's this hard, then it must not be from the Lord. That's it. And and yet we're supposed to be Christ-like. Mm -hmm. I don't see Christ's life being easy. Right. He Absolutely. faced many challenges. He faced every temptation we did, yet did not sin. Absolutely. And so actually it's not that when, when we face something that that's the proof that, it, that God's there because it's easy. No, it's that you faced Goliath mm -hmm. and you realized that God was bigger than Goliath and you had to have faith in him. Amen. And you think about Goliath and, and, and David, you know, David went knowing what the Lord had done for him in the past. And so he brought up the past to glorify God, but also to strengthen him for the battle that was in hand. Absolutely. I think one of the important things to always remember is that there's always two stories at play at mm -hmm. any time. There's the remembrance of, hey, God has delivered me from things. Right. But the enemy also sometimes mm -hmm. tries to plant those seeds of doubt of, yeah, but let me remind you about the times things didn't work right. out. Right. And so we get to decide what voice wins. We get to decide what message is the one that we will take to heart and that we will truly believe in. Amen. So let's talk about that for a minute. We get to decide 
but how do we do it? Because, you know, sometimes the enemy's voice seems so loud and so real, and God's voice is, a, is, is over here kind of, kind of quiet. So how do we move forward in that? I think the key is we have to always go back to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. See, the, the Word of God is a revealed Word. Mm -hmm. That as you live life, you learn more about the words you've already learned. Right. And I also think that when you deal with life, God reveals things about your own words. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what we have to do is we face a trial, we face tribulation, and we have to be willing to say, well, wait a second, what did that scripture say again? Right. And what did it mean? And how can I let that redirect my thoughts mm. and my beliefs. Amen. So meditating on God's word, yes. taking every thought captive yes. because those those excuses and those buts are big. I mean, it some are seem so overwhelming sometimes that it's even hard to take ne the next step. Absolutely. And, and and it's great to start off with writing down your thoughts. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling negative or feeling heavy, right. take out a pen and paper. What have you been thinking about? What have you been ruminating on? It's very hard to fight something that you don't know about, Absolutely. that you're unaware of. Right. So when you bring your awareness to, hey, these are the things that have been rising up inside of me. Now I can say, well, what does the word say mm, about this? Right. Or I can go into prayer and say, God, what do you say right. about this? I truly believe that God speaks in prayer. And so there's so many different ways to combat it, but first we have to know, what is it I'm really dealing with? Absolutely. And I think that goes back to going and doing an inner inner work in your heart, right? Yes. Doing the inner the inner work that a lot of people don't want to do because sometimes that's just too painful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back more with Your Butt's Too Big, but God is not. We'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back to The Christian View. We're having a great discussion today with Maurice Martin. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks again. Maurice wrote a book called Your Butt's Too Big, and just talking about excuses and um, just limiting yourself by your own thought life, you know? And before we went to break, we talked about doing inner healing work, you know, and, and that work of inner healing, it's, it can be hard and it can be painful. And a lot of people, Maurice, don't want to do that work. So let's talk about that. Yeah, you know, when I think about about the Christian culture as, as, as a whole. We love to go to an altar and have someone lay hands mm -hmm. and to have those moments of powerful healing in front of everyone. Right. I think those moments are necessary, but sometimes we lose sight of the importance of, but what happens afterwards? Mm -hmm. Now is where you really have to grow and do the inner healing. Right. It's not just about what people see. But it's about how you heal when people don't see you behind right. those closed doors. And so I'm, I'm certainly an advocate of the fact that if you're going through anything or have been through anything or you're in a season of transition, it is important not just the work you do in front of people, right. but sitting down. Maybe this is a season for a counselor. Go get a Christian counselor. Right. Get a life coach. Get somebody to sit down with you. And, and now it's time for you to say, what does God want for me? Mm -hmm. Where does he want to see me more healthy, more right. healed? Where do I need to forgive? Where do I need to let go of the past? Mm -hmm. I need to do that internal work. Amen. And, and, you know, I don't think it's something that we should be ashamed of or afraid of because, you know, it says in scripture that he's changing us from glory to glory, yes. right? And so we're always going to be a work in progress. But, you know, if you were abused as a child, neglected as a child, that's going to cause trauma in your heart. And if you don't deal with that, those issues, you know, you're not going to be all that God created you to be. Yes, you know, when I think about the word healed, I always think that healed and healing go hand mm. in hand, especially when we're walking with God, that right. he's always healing us right. as a part of the healed journey. And so what I would say to someone is, don't let yourself fall into guilt and shame. I've been there. Yes. I have felt like, hey, Maybe because I'm doubting myself or because I'm feeling insecure or the anxiety is growing. I've had a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression. Right. Maybe I'm doing this thing wrong. And God reminded me of his scripture where he says, in your weakness, my power right. is made perfect. Right. That, the, that that's the point. You need a savior. You need somebody to be strong in all the places that you're weak, and that's okay. Amen. It is okay. It is okay to struggle with depression, anxiety, fear. You know, but it's not okay to let to stay there and it's not okay to let that control you. Yes. You know, and that's why I think it's so important to do the inner work, the inner healing, you know, and to and to go to a trusted friend, a counselor, a pastor and just say, "You know what? I'm struggling 
and it's okay. Yes. You know, it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to stay there. Um, and that's why I love your book, and I love the work that you, you, that you do. I mean, you're a coach, you do transformational coaching, so let's talk a little bit about that. Absolutely, you know, the, the funny thing is, some of the best work I've done were with people who didn't think they had problems. Mm, yeah. You know, when people hear what I do, they go, oh, well, you know, I, I don't feel depressed, I don't think I need that. Right. Well, what of the people who are successful and working hard, but they're just really good at compartmentalization? Mm. In other words, you take all the skeletons and you throw them in a closet somewhere and you stay busy in another right. room. Right. Well, when I sit down and work with leaders, I'm always saying, listen, want to be the healthiest leader possible? Let's take care of the stuff that you keep hidden. Mm -hmm. Let, that doesn't mean dragging up every problem from right. every part of your life. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, what is secretly affecting you? Mm -hmm. Maybe keeping you from your confidence or keeping you from being social. Right. Right. Keep, we have to understand that your personal and professional life go hand in hand. That's right. Because the consistency is you. And if you secretly are not well or you're struggling with something, you're hurting on the inside, you're frustrated, you're angry, or you've just become so bitter that you're hardened. Right. Whatever that is, I always encourage people, you need to sit down and come up with a game plan, not just to deal with everything, but to deal with everything that's dealing with you, keeping you from walking in your greatness. I love that, absolutely. You know, and, and you mentioned shame and guilt a few minutes ago, and mm -hmm. you know, I think about that, and God is a God, he never shames us. No. You know, he never wants us, he never wants to condemn us, and I think about shame is, all, is saying that something is wrong with you, mm -hmm. right? And God has never said that, because when God created created us mm -hmm. with our flaws and imperfections, he said it was good. That's and it. it's the enemy that comes in and wants us to feel shamed and condemned. And that's not the heart of the Father. So I love what you say because it do, we do go hand in hand, the business side of us and the personal side and the spiritual side, you know, all go together. And if we're not, um, it's kind of like a three-legged stool, right? And if one of them is, is off balance, then the whole, the whole stool's gonna be off balance. And so I love, I love that. And you, you do it in such a unique and humble way, mm. helping people kind of pull out their, their purpose and their identity. I, I think the humility in it is that there's nothing I help people with that I don't deal with mm -hmm. myself. That I'm always checking in on myself, asking, are you really okay? Are you really right. healthy? Is there an area of your life that's off? You said it's a three-legged stool, but God is the floor. Amen. God is the foundation, yes. right? And so we need to understand he touches every every part of our life. Mm -hmm. if, the, if scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness, that's for you as a husband, as a wife, as a, a mother, a father, as an entrepreneur. Right. Whatever you're doing, God is touching it or at least should be. Amen. And yeah. so that recalibration process, I go through it myself mm -hmm. and then I walk clients through it. And I think that that's the key is to always be a part of the process. Amen. Because I, I agree with you because if you haven't, You've been there, and so you know what it's like to be in the pit, mm -hmm. and you know what it's like to come out of the pit, and so you can go into the pit and then pull people out. It's kind of like Psalms 23, though I walk through yes. the shadow. Yes, yeah. I love that right before that it says, he, he leads me along paths of righteousness for his namesake. So that means he's leading. Right. And then the next line is, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me that once God starts leading, he might lead me back into the dark place? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, of course he is because we're the light. Amen. Yeah. That's the point. Right. And, and I remember there was a, a time in my life a few years ago, I was going through a rough patch. Right. And that was the reminder is I'm here for a reason and it's bigger than me. That's right. And you're never there by yourself. You're never alone by yourself. And so I love, I love what you're doing. I love the humility that you have, the compassion you have, the strength that you have. You know, I know that God is going to use you mightily in so many ways. We have to take a short break, but we'll be right back with more here on The Christian View. So don't go away. And welcome back to The Christian View. We're having a great discussion with Maurice. Thank you so much again for being here. Thanks again for having me. You wrote this great book, and I love the title. It's called Your Butt is Too Big. I just, I love the title, but it's to help readers move past their healings and their hurts so they can become all God create, created them to be. And, you know, as a counselor and a coach, 
people are hurting, Maurice. They're hurting, they're afraid to be real. They, they say 95% of people are walking around wearing a mask mm. because they're so hurt and broken inside and they don't want people to know their true identity. But you come in and you help people get unstuck. So let's talk about how you help people get unstuck from past hurts. You know, if I was to give you just a couple quick moments or a couple of quick points, I would start off by saying you have to be able to identify the stuck. In other words, if you've been stuck for a while, you need to know how am I stuck? Right. How long have I been stuck and in what areas? Once you're able to identify that, now we can come up with a game plan. As simple as what are some things that you can do to get yourself out of this place, whether it be emotionally, right. physically, spiritually, whatever it might be. And then the third thing is always accountability. Now I actually actually do what I say I'm gonna do and I probably should have somebody watching to hold me accountable mm. with the process. I think that those three things can really help people who are maybe feeling stuck, maybe feeling burned out or broken. And, and it's sad actually how many individuals that we see who are dealing with that. I often think about going to church and saying to someone, how are you? And they just answer blessed and highly favored, <laughs> but their face says the blessings and the favor are not actually touching my personal right, life. Right, right. We already knew you were blessed and highly favored. The Bible says that, but can you feel it? Right. Is it, is it, is it something that is bringing you freedom or are you stuck in your mind? Absolutely. And, and so the, once we can acknowledge it, once we can identify it, once we can start to take those steps to work through it, now we can really make progress. And, and the last thing I would say is simply, it is a process, mm -hmm. an imperfect process. Right. It, you're not gonna get it right every day. It's a practical process that you just have to walk out. And everybody's process is different. Mm -hmm. Everybody's timeline is different. And so that comparison trap can be so ugly when you're looking at someone and it's like, well, she has it all together. He has it all together, you know, mm -hmm. to your life. Well, the comparison and trap, especially social media comparison mm -hmm. trap, that's a fake trap, right? right? Because we already talked about it's the internal work that matters most. What's behind, happening behind closed doors? Right. And the truth is that you usually don't know that. So the greatest thing you can do is compare you to you. Amen. Are you getting better? Right. Are you getting worse? Or are you staying the same? And I don't mean accomplishments. I mean your ability to have peace or have joy or to feel love, right? Mm -hmm. There's this things called the fruit of the spirit. Right, right. Do you have fruit in your life or are you feeling very unfruitful? Right. And I think that's a good that's a good indicator of where you are, you mm. know, spiritually. And and again, we said that in, a, in an earlier segment that they all three go together: your spiritual side, your mental side, your physical side. You know, whether you're in a, the workplace or in the home, they all have to work together in unison to be effective, right? Yes, absolutely. You know, the the funny thing is, because I work with a lot of Christian leaders, and a lot of times I say we get so wrapped up in spiritual gifts, mm -hmm. which are amazing things, right. right? But if you don't pay enough attention to spiritual fruit, it will start to affect those mm. different areas of your life, right. right? If I don't have peace, it's going to affect me professionally. Amen. It's going to affect my marriage. It's going to affect my parenting mm -hmm. or my ability to show up in life. I think that showing up is of the most important things that yes. there are, right? That, that scripture talks about, Jesus says, don't worry about tomorrow because worrying has not changed anything. Right. There's not a single thing that has been done because of worry. That's true. And so we need to understand we need to be rooted in today mm -hmm. and grounded in today and believing that God is more than enough in the day you're in. Amen. I love that because we get so um, focused on tomorrow, what we're going to do tomorrow. Yes. And God is saying, be in the present, be in the present. So Maurice, you, um, you do a lot of things, you know, <laughs> the transformational coach, you, you're a speaker. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your speaking. Sure, absolutely. So uh, at this stage, it's it's been great because I'm speaking not only to schools, but also, also to churches. Mm -hmm. And so I always tell people, you will know if you need me, if you're either looking at a group of leaders and they've got that burned out face, they've got that we're overwhelmed look, or we know that people are getting catty with one another and things aren't working as well as we need them to. I love to go into those situations mm -hmm. with, a, with a biblically grounded message. Now, when I'm, when I'm going into corporations and things, of right. course, I, I don't talk about Jesus though, you can tell I'm a Jesus guy. Right, absolutely. Uh, but when I walk into churches, let's say with leaders, I always say, listen, the word of God has the answers, but as a team, as individuals, we're gonna need to lean into that word and let that word shine the light on the areas where we're having problems. Right, right. 
I love that. I love the word and uh, lean. You know, it's mm -hmm. pressing in, like yes. going deeper, digging deeper. Um, and that's such a powerful word, even though it, it doesn't seem like a powerful word. But, but God calls us to lean in. Well, the question becomes, when adversity strikes, do you lean in? or do you check out? Right. And a lot of times we check out of difficulty. And so if you're finding yourself checking out, yes, lean in, which simply means take a deep breath and ask yourself, am I really in this room? Right. Do I really smell the air? Yeah. Am I really here? I know sometimes as a dad, my, my, my daughter will be talking to me, daddy, 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 and I don't hear her. Right. And so it's that reminder of, hey, everything that's important to me is right here, right. right now, and I need to lean into it. To lean in and be, and be present. So let's back up just a minute about the transformational coaching. Mm -hmm. You know, people are stuck. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about just maybe someone might be listening and, and think, well, maybe I'm stuck, maybe I'm not. What are some signs that they're actually stuck? That's a great question. Uh, one of the things that I often say is that the client that I help the best may not be stuck in a traditional sense. Mm -hmm. They may be making good money. They may be doing good things that are well in life. But if you're feeling like your stool, your three-legged stool mm -hmm. is out of whack and off balance, that's stuck enough to me. Right. So if let's say you're making money and you're, you're well beloved in the community, but your marriage is broken. And, and even though everybody loves you, there's very little love when you walk into home. Right you might need a coach. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're, you're, you're doing really well in, in uh, your marriage and you're doing good in the social life, but in your business, you're not walking in the fullness of what God has called you to. You're not walking with confidence. Mm -hmm. You're not being as bold as you need to be. Right. These are the types of areas where I tend to help people the most because I'm gonna sit down and say, how can we pull on the strengths that you see in those other areas and apply them to the areas where you're lacking? Right. And so that's why I say a lot of times I work with leaders more than anything else because it's somebody who's already driven and who wants to do well, but does need a push and does need extra steps right. and extra strategies. I love that. So what is one, what is the, where do you find people the most stuck? Do you think it's spiritual? Do you think it's physical, mental? Like where have you found people be, to be the most stuck right now? I think people are most stuck in their identity. Mm, that's a lot of people talk about imposter syndrome, right? Right. Well, imposter syndrome is when even when you accomplish great things, for some reason you don't feel like you deserve right. it or you don't feel like that accomplishment belongs to you. Right. And so I find that the majority of the work I do is helping people see their self as God sees them. Amen. Right? That, that is good. Th when you accomplish great things, you're accomplishing it because God positioned Amen. you for it. I love that. We got to take a short break. I love that. We'll be right back with more here on The Christian View. Don't go away. Hi, and welcome back to The Christian View. We've had a great discussion today with Maurice Martin. Thank you again for being here. It's been a pleasure. Um, his book is called Your Butt's Too Big. And, you know, we all have past hurts, past regrets that could potentially keep us from our full potential. But God has great things for you. Do the inner work that you need to do so that you can be successful for Christ because He loves you, He sees you, and He has great things. Take care. We'll see you next time here on The Christian View.